Welcome into our second video here on chapter nine on electrochemistry. In this second video, we'll look deeper into our electrochemical cells, including how to calculate our standard cell potentials and to use that information to give us intuition about our spontaneous reactions. Previously, we've been thinking about voltaic cells where we have a redox reaction with the oxidation separated from the reduction. Our oxidation occurs at the anode. Our reduction occurs at the cathode. Since these are separated from each other and need to transfer electrons to each other, there is a flow of electrons from the anode to the cathode. Our goal now is to look at why these reactions occur spontaneously, think about the energetics of these half reactions, and study the electrochemistry of these currents that can be produced. When we have our half reactions separated, the electrons need to transfer across this wire, causing a current. The flow of charge is known as current. To understand why there is a flow of current from one side of this cell to the other side of the cell, we can draw an analogy to water. If we think about water, it flows from high places down to low places. Water goes from high to low due to gravity, due to a difference in height, due to a difference in potential energy based on its position. We can have a flow of water from high potential energy to low potential energy. Electrons in our voltaic cells will do the same thing based on electrical potentials and charge flowing from places of high electrical potential to lower electrical potential. When we have electrons flowing, we can cause an electrical current. Why does water flow from high to low? Well, there's a potential energy difference. Why do electrons flow from the anode to the cathode? Well, there's an electrical potential difference between our anode and our cathode. Our anode is at a higher potential energy than our cathode. And just like water spontaneously flows downhill due to gravity, electrons will spontaneously flow from high electrical potentials to lower electrical potentials. As it turns out, each half reaction has its own unique electrical potential energy. For our reaction at the anode, we can call this our potential for, in this case, iron into some iron 2 plus. That's the half reaction that's occurring at the anode. It has some potential for that reaction. At the cathode, we can have a potential energy for that lead 2 plus ions reducing into lead. The exact electrical potential is impossible to measure directly. We need to have some reference point to compare things to. But we can describe our reference point as the standard hydrogen electrode, where we have one molar of our hydrogen ions being reduced into hydrogen gas at a pressure of one ATM. This is our quote unquote zero point for our voltage. This is almost like our sea level or our water analogy. Why do we call sea level our zero point for altitude? Well, someone just decided that that is a convenient place to put the zero. We can go lower than that. We can go higher than that. We just need some place to call zero so that we can compare everything to each other. Same thing with our standard hydrogen electrode. This is what we are calling our 0, 0.00 volts. And notably, volts is our unit for potential energy. Here is that standard hydrogen electrode. We have one ATM of gas, one molar of our solution. These are our standard conditions. If we want to describe the voltage for our cell, we can use this equation. We can compare our quote unquote altitudes between our anode and our cathode. 
the voltage difference across our cell, the voltage that this cell can produce as a battery, is equal to our cathode reduction potential minus our anode reduction potential. For our class, we're only going to deal with reduction potentials. And in fact, we'll be given a handout including all the reduction potential values that you might need. Other places you might see oxidation potentials. That's okay as well. If you reverse a reaction, you just need to change the sign for the potential energy. As we said before, our electrons will flow from high potentials to lower potentials, just like water flows downhill. If we're able to connect two of our half reactions together, electrons will spontaneously flow from the higher potential down to that lower potential. The voltage difference across our cell is our voltage of our cathode minus the voltage at our anode. Final minus initial. We have two different versions of this cell potential that we can look at. What we've seen mostly so far is the standard cell potential. We have that circle symbol up in the top right. That means we're at standard conditions. One molar for our solutions, one ATM for our gases. Without that circle, we have just the cell potential at any other condition. We could have different concentrations. We could have different pressures. We can start to build some intuition here. When we have positive and large cell potentials for our galvanic cells, these are going to correspond to spontaneous processes. Our cell potential has to be positive for this reaction to be spontaneous. For example, if we have zinc and copper 2 plus reacting to form copper and zinc 2 plus, this has a standard cell potential of 1.10 volts. This is going to be a spontaneous reaction. Alternatively, if we have copper reacting with zinc 2 plus, turning into zinc and copper 2 plus, this is going to be a standard cell potential of negative 1.10 volts. This reaction is not spontaneous. Here is a peek at our handout for standard electrode potentials. We have all these different reduction reactions and we have the standard reduction potential. For the reactions that we just looked at, we had zinc and copper. We can find those reactions on our handout. The potential for copper 2 to turn into copper is positive 0.34 volts. For zinc 2 plus to be reduced into zinc, we have negative 0.76 volts. That's how we're able to calculate our standard cell potential. In our first reaction, we have zinc being oxidized. That's at the anode. That's the value we need to subtract. We have copper 2 plus turning into copper. That's our reduction that happens at the cathode. That's the value we need to add. And that's it. We take our reduction potential at the cathode and subtract the reduction potential at our anode. In this case, we end up with a positive number. This reaction will be spontaneous. Take a moment and see if we can get this practice problem. We'd like to know what is being oxidized, what is being reduced, right? Which half reaction is going on at the anode, which half reaction is going on at the cathode. Here we can see that copper is turning into copper 2 plus, which means it's being oxidized which means it's occurring at the anode. Nitrate has to be reduced in order to turn into nitrogen monoxide, and so that occurs at our cathode. We can look up our standard reduction potentials, 0.96 and 0.34, and we can plug those into our equation. Our standard cell potential here is 0.62 volts, which means that it is spontaneous. One important thing to point out, even though we have 
coefficients in our balanced reaction that are different than that show up on our standard reduction potentials, that's okay. We still just pull the number from our chart. We don't need to multiply anything by the coefficients. It only matters what half reaction is occurring, not how many times. We have another practice problem here. Which of these metals will dissolve in hydrochloric acid? Well, this is asking, will a spontaneous redox reaction occur between hydrogen and any of these metals? To help us decide, we can think about this reaction. Can our metal and these hydrogen ions react to form hydrogen as a pure element and our metal as some charged species? In each of these cases, our hydrogen has to be reduced while our metal has to be oxidized. That means our metal has to be at the anode while hydrogen ions appear at the cathode of our pretend voltaic cell. In order for this reaction to be spontaneous, our standard cell potential needs to be a positive number. So let's check. For gold, our cell potential would be zero for the cathode and 1.50 at the anode. This will be negative 1.50, which is negative and non-spontaneous. Gold will therefore not dissolve in hydrochloric acid. If we're thinking about iron instead, iron has a reduction potential of negative 0.76. The cell potential here needs to be positive 0.76 because we're subtracting our negative number. And with a positive cell potential, this gets to be spontaneous. For iron, we have two different reduction potentials to be reduced two different ways. Both of these are negative values, however, which means that, yes, it can be dissolved. It can be oxidized by our hydrogen ions. Lastly, copper, if we plug this into our formula with a reduction potential of positive 0.34, unable to be dissolved in hydrochloric acid. Okay, different metals are used for different things. Gold is nice because it's hard to react with, hard to dissolve, hard to oxidize. Likewise, copper has these nice properties as well, harder to oxidize than some of our other metals. If we have nitric acid, our story is a little bit different because now we can also do this reduction of nitrate. The reduction potential for nitrate is 0.96, and so we can have that reaction at our cathode as well. Now, if we're considering this redox reaction with our gold and nitric acid, well, gold still has too high of a reduction potential to be oxidized by that nitric acid. Zinc and iron can be oxidized just by H plus by itself, so can still be dissolved when there's nitric acid present. And the last one here, our different one, just like we saw in the previous example, the cell potential when we have copper and nitric acid actually gets to be positive. And so copper will be dissolved in nitric acid, but not in hydrochloric acid. One final practice question for us here. Can we decide which direction of these reactions will be spontaneous? Will these reactions go forwards or will these reactions go backwards? We can start by looking up our reduction potentials for all of these different half reactions. Once we have that, we can check for the reaction as it's written, what is the actual standard cell potential? In this reaction as it's written, we can see that manganese 2 plus is being reduced into manganese. That is our cathode reaction. We'll start with that value. Meanwhile, iron is being oxidized into iron 2 plus. That will be our second value. If we plug this into our calculator, we get a negative value. 
which means the reaction here as it's written is not going to be spontaneous. And instead, the reverse reaction will be spontaneous. We can do a similar approach for our second problem. We can look up our values for silver plus and nickel two plus. Our standard cell potential for this reaction is going to be our reduction reaction at the cathode, which is silver plus turning into silver. And we can subtract our oxidation, which occurs at the anode, which is our nickel turning into nickel 2 plus, and find our value. This cell potential is going to be positive, which means the forward reaction is spontaneous. And there we have it. We can have our voltaic cells produce some electrical current based on their various electrical potentials at the different electrodes. Different half reactions have different electrical potentials, and we can do those calculations. Thank you very much for being here. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And until then, have a great day.